brethren. Good morning. <clears throat> well, brethren, the last day has been appointed. Amen. And there's nothing that can deter it, delay it, or cause it to come any sooner than God has purposed. And it is God who has appointed this last day, so we can be sure that the day appointed will come when he has uh, purposed it to come. Now those who are the servants of God, they are faithful to watch and wait. For we do not know when that day will come. And so we must be faithful to keep our eyes focused on that day so that we will be among those who see his appearing and are able to rejoice at the sight of it. Amen. So we're looking forward to that day because it's the fulfillment of our hope. In this life, we have a hope yeah. that of a world to come. Yeah. And so this is one of the reasons why we look forward, is because this is our hope Amen. to see his coming. But it's also the realization of a promise from God. And those who are his children look to the promises of God so that we'll be able to rejoice when we see him uh, fulfill these promises. Hebrews 9.28 says, Unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. This is another of our hopes that we have in Christ Jesus, that we will be completely removed from sin. We'll have no ties to it whatsoever. And so this is, this is one of the things that gives us great joy in looking forward, is this promise that we will be completely cut off from sin and all of its effects. Amen. But also we look to salvation, which encompasses more than simply the removal of sin. <laughs> salvation is greater than that. And so this actually brings us further than just the removal of our sins, but it actually causes us to look forward to being perfect Amen. in him. 1 John 3, verse 2 says, We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the uh, fulfillment, so to speak, of salvation, is that we will be made holy like our Father. Amen. Amen. And it is our desire to finally be rid of this sin forever and to be like our Father in heaven. This is what compels us to keep looking forward to the day when he shall appear. For those whose greatest desire it is to see his coming, it is a great comfort then to know that the day has been appointed. And it has been appointed by God himself, and no one and nothing can delay it from coming. When God makes an appointment, we can be sure that he will keep it. Amen. Men can make appointments and then break them, but God does not work in this way. Amen. When he sets an appointment, there is nothing and no one who can prevent it from coming. Consider the examples were given in Genesis concerning the birth of Isaac. Genesis 18:14 says, "Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son." Now Isaac was the fulfillment of this promise given to Abraham by God that he would have a son through Sarah. Now Sarah was barren, and she was well advanced in years. So the circumstances of the earth did not look like they were ripe for bringing about this promise. And no amount of labor on Abraham or Sarah's part could have caused Isaac to be born any earlier. But when the appointed time came, yeah. there were no earthly circumstances such as barrenness or age or anything else that could have prevented Isaac from being born. And we know that we have an enemy who would have prevented it if he could have, but he was not able. When God determines to do a work, it is not in the power of mankind to hinder or, or to hasten God's hand in the matter. Looking to another account in the scriptures, the account of the plagues of Egypt, we're given more example of, of God appointing a thing. Uh, Exodus 9, verses 5 and 6 says, And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. 
but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Mm -hmm. So here we have a very, very different perspective. On the one hand, the Egyptians, their cattle all died. But on the other hand, the Israelites, their cattle, not one cattle died. Mm -hmm. And so we see how important it is on the day of the day that's appointed to be on the right side. Amen. <laughs> the loss the Egyptians suffered will seem as nothing on the day of judgment. Their, all they lost was, on, on that particular day, they lost all their cattle. But, and while it was a great loss for them, the loss that the wicked will suffer on the day, the, the day that's coming will seem as, will, will be so much greater than any loss any man has suffered here. Those who are not found faithful on that day will have much to wail and mourn about. But a day's been reserved for judgment and nothing will be able to delay its coming either. It's a set time. It's fixed. It's unmovable. And those who are not ready for its coming will, will wail and mourn at its appearing. <laughs> but those who have been faithful have a very different outcome to look forward to. Those who have been faithful to watch and wait with patience will rejoice exceedingly. Amen. Psalms 101, verses 12 and 13 says, But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. So God has made a, he's appointed this day, it's a set time, it's going to come to pass. He's, he's planned, so to speak, on Um, rewarding those who are faithful and casting out those who are unfaithful. Amen. And so, brethren, in closing today, I want to encourage all of you to keep on looking forward mm -hmm. so that you will be able to rejoice at His coming and not be among those who are found unfaithful and who have reason to sorrow on that day. Amen. Amen. It's always important to remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. 1 John 3, verses 2 through 3 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So, brethren, I encourage you all to keep looking for the coming of, the Lord and, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the children of God, brethren. So looking forward to heaven to us is looking to our homeland yeah. where our heavenly father abides and where we will abide with him forever if we remain faithful, yeah. brethren. So I encourage you today to remain faithful to him and you will not be uh, sorrowful at the day of his coming, but will rejoice with exceeding gladness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>